Welcome to the Brass Hand Woodwind Shop. A lot of people ask me what tools you need to get started in band instrument repair. In this video I put out all the tools that I recommend to get started in woodwind repair. If you want to see the video on the brass tools, look in the description below for a link to that video. There is a little overlap between the woodwind and the brass tools. Some of the tools are the same. So if you are ordering for brass and woodwind repair, there are several tools that you will not need to buy two of. These are not all the tools that you could use for woodwind repair. There are several other tools that are nice to have. If you find that there is another tool that you need, then buy that one. There are some tools here that I recommend that you will find that you can get by without. For example, if you decide not to do saxophones, a lot of these tools you will not need. Silver polish, and this is cork cement, and this works for gluing the corks on when you do the key corks and also the tenon corks. You're going to want at least one needle oiler with oil in it, and that's for oiling the hinge rods and pivot screws and other things that need to be oiled. This is a bench motor. It's expensive, but you can use it for a lot of different things, so I recommend that you get one of these. This is a small vise that you can use for a lot of different things. Use it for holding things when you work on them or whatever. This is a V-block, and it's used for holding things in your large bench vise. I do not have a bench vise in this picture, but you need one of those to do anything with brass or woodwind repair. You'll need a set of drill bits. This is a size 1 to 60. There are many other sizes too, but I recommend a size 1 through 60. That gets you started, and it will cover most of what you need to do for woodwind repair. Another tool that's fairly expensive but you'll want one is a saxophone leak light. If you do any saxophone work you will want one of these leak lights. These are sets of flat springs and needle springs and you don't necessarily need the whole set. You only need a few. Those are used to replace springs on instruments that break and springs do break so you will need some of those. You might not necessarily need all of them though. For the dent mandrels, I just have the flute head joint mandrel and the flute body mandrel. You can order a whole lot of dent tools, especially for saxophone, but unless you're going to do a lot of saxophone work, probably order those later if you need to, but I do recommend getting the flute body mandrel and the flute head joint mandrel. These two tools usually work together. This is a flute tenon shrinking die, and this is a flute tenon expander. You use these with flute joints that do not fit together well, either if they're too loose or too tight. You use these two tools, usually in conjunction with each other, to repair those. Also for cleaning purposes, a flute cleaning rod, it works on all the instruments, not just flute. This is a set of needle files, and you'll use those quite a bit in woodwind repair. And they're different shapes, they're very small so you can get into small areas. And also I recommend two larger files. This is a tone hole file. It's intended to level out saxophone tone holes, but you can use it for other things too. And I also suggest an all-purpose file. There are a lot of different hammers and mallets that you can get. I suggest that you start with a rawhide mallet, a small rawhide mallet, and a medium rawhide mallet, and also a bench hammer. For screwdrivers, you'll need the set of three woodwind screwdrivers. There's the small, medium, and large, and you use these all the time, and you cannot get by without the screwdrivers for woodwind repair. And then I also have some screwdrivers. These are like the ones you'll find in your toolbox, and you can get those pretty much anywhere. These are used on saxophone key guards and a few other things. This is a triangular knife, or also known as a solder scraper. That is used on a lot of different things for cleaning up. And then the pliers. I have several pliers here. There's the swedging pliers. This is used for tightening up loose keys. And this one also is fairly expensive, but you should have one if you're going to do woodwind repair. This is a duckbill pliers. It has a large end on it, and it has a flat, uh, smooth jaws. This one's used for a lot of different purposes, too. Uh, this is a wire cutter. It can be used for cutting needle springs or other things that need to be cut. These three pliers are used for needle springs. There's the whole spring removing pliers, the broken spring removing pliers, and the spring installing pliers. These two pliers are good all-purpose pliers. This is a round nose pliers, and it's used for a lot of different things. And also there's the flat nose pliers with the smooth jaws, and that is used for a lot of different things too. I use these two tools every day. This is called a spring hook. It has a hook on one end and something to push the springs on the other end. This is used for hooking and unhooking woodwind needle springs. This one, as you can tell, is homemade. You can also buy these. They're not very expensive. 
And this is also homemade. It's a feeler gauge and it's used for testing pads to see if they seat the right way. I made a video on how to make these, so I will leave the link to that video in the description below. This is a pad leveling tool and it's used for leveling pads on woodwind instruments. You heat them up and then you put it underneath there and you level the pad with this. This also has a lot of other purposes that you can use it for. This is sandpaper. You're going to run a lot of different grits of sandpaper. You can get that locally at your local hardware store. Uh, masking tape, also you can get that locally. And paraffin wax. Those all can be gotten locally. Uh, this is cork. You're going to need a lot of cork. There are a lot of different thicknesses. Look in the description below for the different thicknesses you'll need for cork. This is a cork cutting pad. It works well for, you put your cork there and leave the different scraps so that you have those in place. And also you can use it to cut on. You're going to want a lot of razors to do this job because they get dull very quickly and a razor does not last you that long. These are different types of glues, usually used for holding on the pads, but they can be used for other things too. There are a lot of different types of glue that you can use. These are hot glue sticks used for crafting. You put them in hot glue guns, but you can also use them like this, and then you can heat them up with a torch and put them on the backs of the pads and use that for putting the pads in. This way is very cheap and it works well. Also, I recommend that you get some liquid shellac. I keep it in a film canister. These are shellac flakes, and what you do is you mix it with some denatured alcohol, and you make up a little canister of liquid shellac, and you can use that for holding on pads too. I usually use this on saxophones, and I use this one on clarinets. For soldering, you only need a few things. You can get by with a small micro torch, but if you are going to do a lot of soldering, I recommend that you get a larger torch, and this one is hooked up to an acetylene tank. The tanks of gas cannot be sent through the mail, so you can buy the torch, and then you have to buy the tank of gas locally, if it's available in your area. But you can usually get by with one of these torches. You also want some liquid flux and solder. You'll probably need some soldering clamps, I only have two in this video, but I do recommend that you get a few more than that. Also, you'll need safety glasses for soldering and for buffing. For the buffing supplies, and this is probably about all you will need for woodwind repair. You can get more, but you'll need the bench motor and then a spindle to hold the buffing wheel. And just one or two razor buffing wheels will get you by for a while. Buffing gloves and white buffing compound. It's really all you need to get started at woodwind buffing. This is a jeweler's saw, and you want the jeweler's saw frame and also some different size blades. And these make a very fine cut. This is called a jeweler's anvil. This is a flat, polished piece of steel, and it's used for straightening out hinge rods and a few other things too. Uh, this is a chunk of wood, and I just use that for a lot of different things. Uh, it's nothing fancy, just a chunk of wood. These are flute head parts. Often those need to be replaced, so get a small supply of those. And then some felts. These are bumper felts for saxophone key guards. And these are felts for flutes and saxophone keys. These are woodwind screw boards where you put the hinge rods and the pivot screws. And you can make these yourself. You just get a board and drill some holes in them. These keep the screws in order. I recommend that you get more than one in case if you're doing more than one instrument at a time. All that's left are the pads. These are not all of my pads. This is just a representative supply of what I have. These are my saxophone pads. There are about a hundred different sizes of saxophone pads and saxophone pads are very expensive. So just order what you need. Don't order all of the saxophone pads at one time unless you have a lot of money to spend. For the clarinet pads, I will put the common sizes that you need in the description below. Order about one dozen of each of the common sizes, and then as you use them up, order more. These are flute pad clamps, and you use those when you're repadding a flute, and you'll probably need about a dozen of those. These are my flute pads, and you will not need as many different sizes of flute pads, probably only about 10 different sizes. And I use mostly the yellow pads, and I have some white pads here too that I use if I'm trying to match what's already on a flute, and I just need to replace one or two pads. But usually I, but usually I use the yellow pads. You can use either one. A lot of different manufacturers make the pads. Just find what you like and stick with it. I use Freeze for the saxophone pads. Hermes for the clarinet pads, 
and Allied for the flute pads. I also have cork pads. I use the 9mm cork pads for the register key on a clarinet and also I use the cork pads for oboes. But if you're not going to do oboes, you probably only will need a few 9mm cork pads for clarinets. If you are going to work on oboes, I recommend that you get about a dozen of each size of the cork pads. Most of these tools come from Furry's Tools or Allied Supply. Furry's Tools will sell to anybody, but you get a discount if you have an account with them. Allied Supply only sells to music stores and people who have an account with them. So if you are starting a music store, make sure to get an account with those two companies. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos. And look in the description below for the complete list of tools that are in this video. And also look in the description below for a link to other related videos.